The lesson outcome for this video is I can use the quadratic formula to solve an equation. Okay, so we've been solving quadratic equations for a while now by using factoring. And when we did our factoring, we said, all right, since the coefficient of x squared is 1, then we can factor this the kind of the quick way by using the c value off to the side. And we think of the factor pairs for negative 2, which would be negative 1 times 2. And then we would realize that if we add these up, we're going to get either 1, or if we change this to positive and this to negative, we get negative 1. But in no way, shape, or form could we ever get positive 4. That means that this quadratic equation is not going to be solvable by factoring. Uh, we can't solve it by factoring because it's not factorable, which means we need a new tool, and that new tool is the quadratic formula. This is the quadratic formula, right here, this whole thing. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a. You'll notice that uh, there are a's, b's, and c's in this formula, and all of those letters need to be replaced by some number, and then we will evaluate this to find our values for x. So the question is, where do those a, b, and c values come from? Well, they come from the equation that we're trying to solve. The first thing you have to make sure to do in all of our original, our first examples, we'll always have this, but we need that equation to equal zero. Because what we're saying here is that we're trying to find the x value when y equals zero. So we have to make sure everything's on the same side of the equal sign, which it is. And then we find a, b, and c by simply looking in front of x squared for our a value, in front of x for our b value, and then the number that stands alone as our c value, just like we've seen in the quadratic equations we've used in the past. Now, you'll notice that there is no number in front of x squared, which means it is always a, hopefully you guys can remember this, it is a 1, okay? So in this equation, a is 1, we're going to fill that in right here. And then we know that b in this equation is, sorry, is 4. So b is 4. And then our c value is negative 2. So now we're going to take those three numbers, 1, 4, and negative 2, and put them where they belong in this formula so that we can simplify and evaluate. All right. So we start with, and I do uh, prefer that we rewrite the quadratic formula fully every time as we simplify. So x equals negative b, and b is 4, plus or minus, and that's going to actually show us later that we're going to have two solutions in most cases, and we'll look at that later, plus or minus the square root of the b value squared. Now, please be careful. We have to put that b value in parentheses if we're going to be using our calculator later, and I'll show you why. Squared minus 4 times the a value times the c value. We'll extend this. The square root should go all the way to the end of that. And then all over 2 times the a value. So you'll notice I just took the a value, put it in for a here and here, the 1. I put the 4 in where the b exists, which is in these two places here. And we took the c value of negative 2 and put it in for c right here. Now, what we could do is we could ignore all of this up here. We don't have to worry about any of that at this point. All we need to do is look at this. And we're going to simplify this using um, the order of operations, really. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to simplify anything that's under the square root. Anything in here. So we're going to square um, the 4 first. So x equals negative b. And I'm just going to simplify and write this all in the same color now. So negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared. Well, 4 squared is 4 times 4. Remember, that's not 8. That is 16. One of our issues in the quadratic formula is if b was a negative value, squaring the negative, we have to remember, is always going to be positive. Then we continue with minus 4 
times 1 times negative 2. Now, this is another area of the quadratic formula that people make mistakes. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave this minus sign right here. I'm going to leave that right here. Okay, so that minus sign is already taken care of. Don't worry about this right now. So I think about 4 times 1 is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So this right here, again, ignoring this minus sign, is 4 times 1 times negative 2, which is negative 8. Which means I'm going to write a negative 8 right here. Now what happens there is we get a negative negative 8. So when we simplify that later, it's going to end up being a plus. Another way you could have done this is you could have thought of the 4 as being negative 4. So then it's negative 4 times 1 times negative 2, which is then positive 8. A couple different ways to look at that. All divided by 2 times 1 the mod in the denominator, which is 2. Alright, so now we're going to continue simplifying. I'm going to bring this up here. And I'm going to write x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus negative 8. 16 minus negative 8, again, right here, this becomes plus. So 16 plus 8 is 24, all over 2. Now what we're going to do is we're going to square root 24. All right, we're going to use our calculator to do that. So if you've got yours handy, we're going to take the square root of 24. When we take the square root of 24, we get 4.89897, etc. It goes on for a while. What we're going to use is we're going to use three decimal places, three points after the decimal place, or three numbers, excuse me, and we're going to round that accurately. So what this is going to end up being is 4.899, if we were to simplify that correctly. So x equals negative 4 plus or minus 4 point eight nine nine and again that's all over two now this is where the quadratic formula um, again gets a little tricky for some people what we have to do now is we have to simplify the top in two different ways plus or minus positive or negative here simplify it two ways and then divide both of those answers by two when we do this on your cal if if you do this on your calculator which most of you will what there's a couple of issues. We can't type in negative 4 plus 4.899 divided by 2 all in one line on our calculator unless we use parentheses. So this gets a little messy and I'm going to show you what I would do if I were you. So first of all we're going to split this up into two different situations because we've got plus or minus. So we're going to have x equals negative 4 plus 4.899 all divided by 2, or we're going to have x equals negative 4 minus 4.899 divided by 2. So now, if you use your calculator and, to, and you were to type in negative 4 plus 4.899, I'm going to ask that you be sure to hit enter right away after you do the top, the numerator. So hit enter, and what that will be is 0.899, and now we can divide that by 2. Again, if you try to type this in and divide it by 2 right away, it's going to give you an incorrect answer. So we're going to take negative 4 plus 4.899 and hit enter, and then we're going to divide that answer by 2, and we get 0.49, I'm sorry, 0.4495 which means we're going to round this to 0 0.450. And the other one, x equals, we're going to take negative 4, subtract 4.899 and hit enter, which is going to be negative 8.899, and divide that by 2. We're going to end up with negative 4.450 when we round. So these are our two solutions to this equation. Typically with a quadratic formula, we will end up with decimal answers, and I know those aren't everybody's favorite thing, but the reason that we had to use the quadratic formula is there were no whole number factors that we could use to do our factoring, which is why we ended up having to use this formula. So our answers are 0 0.450 and negative 4.450 for x. Okay, so let's try one more uh, example with the quadratic formula. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to list our a, b, 
B and C values. Remember that A is the number that is in front of X squared, which is 3. Before we do this, by the way, we should double check that it is equal to 0 on one side, which it is. Our B value comes from the number in front of X. In this case, it's a negative 5. Pay attention to the sign in front. And C is the value that stands alone. It's not a coefficient, and it's a constant, and it's negative 8. All right, now we're going to write the quadratic formula x equals, before we put any numbers in, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a, or 2 times a. All right, so we're going to go ahead and substitute a, b, and c, substitute 3, negative 5, and negative 8 in for a, b, and c. When we do this, we need to be careful now as some things, some different things happen in this example. So x equals negative b. So x equals negative, the b value is negative 5. So what this becomes is negative, negative 5. Now, you might jump right ahead and go, oh, if it's a negative b and b is already negative, a negative, negative 5 is positive. But I'm going to show that, especially in our very first few examples. So negative, negative 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now again, b is our negative 5, and we need to put that in parentheses. I'll talk about that more in a minute. Squared minus 4 times the a value, which is 3, times the c value, which is negative 8. All over 2 times the a value, which is 3. All right, so now after we substitute all those um, numbers in for a, b, and c, again, we're just simplifying using our normal order of operations. Okay, so the first thing we're going to simplify here is we are going to go, oh, we have a negative, negative 5, and we know a negative, negative 5 is positive 5, plus or minus the square root. Now, right here, this is one of our common mistake, um, our points of, of making a mistake, and that's because... If you use your calculator and you type in negative 5 squared without parentheses, the calculator is going to tell you it's negative 25. Here's a huge hint. This original chunk right here, the number b squared, will never, ever, ever be negative. Never once. So when you put a number right here, no matter what, this first number right here, the very first number, has to be positive. Because a negative times a negative is a positive, and a positive times a positive is a positive. So don't let the, the issue of not using parentheses or your calculator um, give you issues there. Just say, oh, I know that negative 5 squared is positive 25. That number, again, will always be positive. All right, now we have minus 4 times 3 times negative 8. And I'm going to do 4 times 3 times negative 8 on my calculator, and I get negative 96. I'll divide it by 2 times 3, which is 6. All right, so now we have x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus negative 96. Again, this minus and minus here will make it a, a plus, an adding situation. And we get 121 when we add those, divided by 6. All right. So now we get x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 121. And you might have noticed that square root of 121 is not a decimal answer. It's just 11 divided by 6. Now again, we're going to split this up, this plus and minus situation. I'm going to put the plus this way and the minus this way. So I have x equals 5 plus 11 divided by 6. And I have x equals 5 minus 11 divided by 6. So 5 plus 11 divided by 6 will be 2.6 repeating. So we're going to use 2.667. Again, three decimal places, please. And over here, x equals 5 minus 11 is negative 6. And negative 6 divided by 6 is negative 1. So we have our two solutions. The main thing about the quadratic formula is it just takes a lot of practice. So that's what we're going to do. A lot of practice with this.